All right. You showed me the play. I did show you the play. And Chris Paul, love him to death. Not good. Good kid. Not probably good football player. Probably, I don't know if he's even a backup. I mean, he's he's strong. He's a backup. Don't, we don't need to be hyperbolic. You're right. He's probably that, though, at best. Uh, he's under contract, so he'll be on your team next year as a backup, yes. hopefully, if you can upgrade your left guard Sure. Spot. But that's the thing. If you have a stud left tackle, Chris Paul probably instantly becomes a better football player. And you have a stud center. He's, he's playing next to a pretty damn smart left tackle. I don't know how much of a stud Leno is, but he's smart. Bro, one of the worst misses of the game is Charles Leno on a mental mistake. Oh, they miss the the play where Terry, uh, the like Howard makes the play on Terry in the red zone mm. or the strike zone. Leno just like doesn't squeeze down on a blitzer, and you're like, dude, I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure it's his responsibility, but yeah. oh, it would have been nice. Sam might have had time. If not, he has Jahan wide open on a high cross. Anyway, the point is pressure killed this game. Um, I think Sam has done a, a good job of elevating the offense, mostly off schedule, but it, it, the on schedule stuff just hasn't been there. Um, and so what does that mean for Sam moving forward? I think is where you were, where you were at. Yeah. And that's every time I feel like I'm ready to make a definitive statement on Sam. He goes, ha, let me show you this Sunday was another to me. Ha, show you this. We are in disagreement about how he performed Sunday. If I had to give him a grade, like A through F, I'd say he was a C minus. And I give him the C minus. We're not minus. that far apart. I maybe C plus. I think like, the, I think the off schedule not a plays, lot of stuff. Yeah, the off schedule stuff look, really makes it look better though, because he's doing high level stuff at times. It's just we're not getting it on a consistent basis, and I don't know if that's because he's not a consistent player or is the offense just wildly inconsistent. And I think the latter is the answer. He's young. He's young, and that, and that's what I think. I'm guilty of it. I admit it all the time. I say I'm guilty of looking at him through the lens of a fifth-round quarterback. If he was a first-rounder, some of the conversations that we're having via radio wouldn't even exist. It sounds stupid because he's clearly the guy, right? Like, this is his first year starting. You've got all these bad put, parts around him. They put a him. million things on his plate. They put a million things on his plate, and we're expecting him to go out and succeed. It's, it's hard to do it. But my thing is, if he, if he was a first-rounder, and I'm guilty of it, like I said— I would be like, hell yeah, he's the starter next year. Why would you abort your young quarterback after one but full he's not. season? So like, but he's, he's not. not. And so like, if you go, if you love Jaden Daniels or whatever you know quarterback is available to you, then the, I think you have to make that consideration. And that's this is what I'll discuss a lot tonight on OT six thirty to ten on the fan. Is it worth? And we had this discussion earlier about Caleb Williams. Is it worth putting one of these young quarterbacks in the same? jacked up position that Sam is in right now. And I understand it's not going to be exactly the same. It's not going to be remotely the same. If it's anything close to the same. Unless you hit on every damn lineman in the draft. This offensive lineman class sucks in terms of free agency. It's not very oh, good. Oh, free agency, So yes. you're going to have to hit on every pick, which is just There's impossible to of, ask. Well, so here's here's the thing about O-linemen. This is something that I've learned doing the draft prep with Logan. Like, part of the reason O-linemen go high and are safe picks, relatively speaking, high is because the uh, the evaluating an O-lineman is actually fairly easy compared to a quarterback yes. or a wide receiver. It's very black or, and white. <laughs> yeah, it's like this dude blocked really well in college. He's probably going to be good in the pros. Like his feet are good. His hands are – his right. arms are this long. Like his, his feet are this good based off the shuttle times and what I see on tape, and he's going to be good. Like Joe Alt's going to be a good football player. We don't know if he's going to be a Hall of Famer. We don't know if he's going to just be like – solid almost pro bowler but like Joe Alt's gonna be a good football player um the Fashanu the kid from Penn State um like he's gonna be a good football player right so you feel pretty good and they'll probably be pretty solid from day one if they're top 10 picks right right so you get your left tackle there there is a deeper guard market there's like no left tackles uh, but if you take Um, but if you take Daniels at four or said quarterback at four, you're not getting that plug and play. Piece sure. But you do have a hundred million dollars in cap space. Like you could go make a trade. Potentially you have two, you have three top 30 uh, top, let's say 38 or so picks. Like you could trade that bears pick and something else for yeah. something like it's, there's, yeah. there's potential to make moves here. And I think that's the thing that I'm excited about for next year is like, I would. I definitely think that it's probably worth buttressing the team around Howell. And then if Sam stinks, then you go next year. I think the risk is: do you miss your window? Can Sam get you to eight and nine next year? And he's you, you're like, ah, God, we need to upgrade a quarterback. And now you're picking at fifteen again. Um, I think yeah. that's that's the <clears throat> risk there. But I kind of feel like that risk is worth it if you can get stud left tackle, go get an edge with the right. pick to replace Sweat, and then on your own pick in the second round, 
go take a right guard or a left guard because you got Cosme. Like, yeah. go go do that. Buttress the thing. And this gets back to the enemy thing. Don't put so damn much on his plate. Like, this is why everyone loves Ben Johnson and why, like, I'm super high on him when I know Grant's super high on him, um, why the whole league has him as the number one guy. One, he's a super dynamic personality and all that stuff. We had Adam Amin on the show on Friday, and I was like, is there anybody that you've talked to this year coordinator-wise in these production meetings that you were just like, man, that guy's definitely a future head coach. He's like, Ben Johnson's in a class on his own. So that that's something. But he also runs a system that is very quarterback-friendly. And I I will say this, like we had David Aldridge on the show earlier in the hour and DA said something that was funny. I didn't have a chance to respond to it in time, but he goes, you know, this is what we heard for years in Philadelphia. Like Andy Reid throws the ball too much. Andy Reid won Super Bowls with that approach when he got Patrick Mahomes. You can't throw the ball too much with Patrick Mahomes. It's not possible. He's too good. He breaks the rules. So what happened? So can you get into a different system that doesn't have that as an issue? Can you get into a different system that is more quarterback friendly, that is more San Francisco, more Detroit, more Miami? And if you get a really good one, then they look incredible, a la Tua this year. Or if you even get the right one, a la Brock Purdy in San Francisco, you can win a ton of football games. That's what I would like to see systemically, schematically, <laughs> et cetera, for the setup for the future from the head coach and certainly for the offense, Sam or otherwise. Yeah, I mostly agree with what you said. I do think if you're going to bring back Sam, I'm just not going to like this, I would probably bring back Eric as my offensive coordinator because I don't want him no to way. learn a third system in three years. It's a, mod- um, it's a West Coast system. It's not that hard. I just, you, it's just hard to learn a system. It like, is it, hard it's to just, learn it's a just, system. Why make him have to take that time to learn a new system instead of just building upon what he already has. Because is the problem the system or is the problem the pieces that are in the system? It's You can have both. But, but I think it, it's more the, the pieces. If, if you have both. Pass protection, a lot of these conversations are moot. I don't know if it's moot. I don't know if it's moot. Um, they're quieter, and we're talking about more winning. But like, Which is the ultimate this, goal at the end of the day. Sure, like, but I, I, I don't care again, how like, you do it. I, I would tell you that this system has worked to maximal output. With one guy, with Mahomes, and like I am not comfortable I mean, having Alex to was find damn good in this system as but well. They, they, he was good, but they ran a different like this it was a different. Was, we were having this conversation before. Yeah, like, which like I, we if were this was see. the Alex Smith version of the system, I think I'd feel a lot better to be honest. Yeah, like they ran a ton of fullback. Game. They ran they ran the ball a ton. Like Jamal Charles had monster years. It's not what they're running here, um, which is kind of bizarre to me. Um, but even back in the day, like with Donovan yeah. McNabb, like Donovan was one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and they they made it to five straight NFC Championship games. Um, but there was a ceiling on it, and I would rather look at the the versions of it that the Shanahan McVay tree, which would include Mike McDaniel in Miami, and includes to an extent like the it's very similar what they're running in Detroit that is more balanced and is more designed to beat the way teams play defense now in the NFL. Um, not to say like Eric is smart. I think, I don't think that Eric and Sam are a good fit. And I also, you know, to end where we ended last week. Wow. Um, I think that from the coaching staff standpoint, it, if you want to keep anybody, it's the special teams crew, but offense, defense, strip it down to the studs and, and start over. Give me a defensive minded head coach that wants to rock with Eric B and Sam for one more year. Cause they're both under contract basically for one more year. And then you Collect everything at the end because you have time to develop a, a team. You're not like you're Ron in year four of a five year deal Anthony, trying to develop it sounds a like quarterback. He wants to make the same mistake as every other regime in the last two decades of Washington ah, football. Ah, so I don't think hiring a defensive minded coach is automatically going to pigeonhole Having you into the, those coach problems. Inherit stuff he doesn't want. And How do you know the coach doesn't want it? That could That's be the thing. That could be Eric's different. Eric's got a lot of Look, relationships in this league. If, a lot of people speak highly about him, I'm sure. For sure. If if you want to go hire Dan Quinn. Raheem Morris, Dan Quinn, Ra- Brian Flores. There are pl- plethora of names that you can go with. I love that you included Flores, the guy McDaniel replaced in Miami. That is perfect full circle. 
justice. It was replaced in Miami because the owner's a jackass and was That's doing part of some it, crazy stuff. And Brian Flores is a hell of a defensive coach, probably top five in the damn National Football League. I think Brian he Flores is defense. excellent, excellent leader of men. Coach. It's really, I'm more looking for a leader of men than I am an X's and O's guru because they don't seem to play inspired. And that's frustrating as hell to watch. You know what I think is amazing, Anthony? He came in here today saying, no I hot takes. Have- <laughs> and hey, I think I give this you? has been the hottest takes that we have gotten from Linnell all year. Warm, baby. There we go. I love it, Linnell. You like it, I love it, man. <laughs> I love it. Can't get enough I also it. thought he was joking because I, I know for a fact he had a lot on his chest, so I, I knew for a fact he had my. It's take. always a lot on this chest. Uh, <laughs> we need this chest to get a little narrower. Linnell well, will be on overtime tonight yes, he uh, will. from 6.30 to 10 on 106.7 The Fan. He's in this chair on Thursday. Oh, I can't wait to push all the buttons. Uh, yeah. Well I, well, I don't know. I can't. I would say I'll let you do the YouTube <gasps> stream too, but. Don't. If you told me that, I wouldn't even do overtime tonight. I would go home and study how you do this right now. I mean, we can we can try to set you get up. a little tutorial. That'd be beautiful. I'd love um, it. We'll see what we can. Appreciate do. you having me as always, man. This uh, is good. Indeed, we're of course because you're here way over time. Uh, we'll get back, and I don't even remember what we're <laughs> talking about next. But Anthony, you need to play the legal ID now. Hey, this is Da, and you're listening to the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app. <laughs> 